Takes prison story family salute y'all welcome to the live uh we got a good one here for you we're honored to have our guest back this is part two with og hollywood west dallas texas man real big homie from the penitentiary three units and uh tell them what you got going on how to find you hollywood about the channel everything introduce yourself uh you can always find me on the uh youtube man at the ferguson chronicle man however but you can really find me if you just google uh the ferguson unit man and, and my show was kind of come up man you can find me on ig at og hollywood speaks once again go to youtube you can either look up og hollywood speaks of the ferguson chronicles can't yep. miss it when i when i look for his channel i just literally type in ferguson chronicles and everything but about uh and i'm gonna tell you something hollywood has interviews with some of the people that you've heard about on the other channels uh a lot of the guys that that uh have been talked about bragged upon people that you know say they know them and stuff like that well hollywood is a guy they all showed up for you know what i'm saying hollywood before we get started real quick tell them who some of the big homies you got on your channel some of the heavy hitters that you got and that you interviewed already oh uh, some of the big homes on my channel you uh you go on my channel you'll find og sugar got a fort worth texas man you can find blue hands the one and only blue hands king shoe uh off the uh, clemens burning hill uh, you can go to my channel. You can find uh, the one and only Big Papa that stayed on Ferguson forever. Uh, it's a number of guys, man, but you can rest for sure. Anybody that would grade the screen of the Ferguson Chronicle, man, kept it uh, way past 110, man. Absolutely. And all of them got so much respect for you. It's it's real apparent. You know what? I'm going to ask you one thing real quick. Big, before we get started on part two, Big Papa, Every time anybody asks anybody about Ferguson, they never leave him out, man. Was he that? How long did he do over there? Uh, right off the top, man, I think Papa was there probably over 20 some years, man. He was on the Ferguson unit over 20 some years, man. And the reason why everybody can always scream Big Papa when it comes to the Ferguson unit, man, because he was known for one thing, man, and that was gambling, man. You know, Papa was a hell of a gambler. However, uh, it's his character, man. You know, uh, character is what get a man uh, a lot of respect in prison, man. It's not so much as being real, man, but if you got good character, you know, in other words, what we say, if uh, real recognize real, man, and that's 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 what describes Papa, man. His character, man, got him got him uh, through a lot of people, man, you know, his character. Facts, facts. You know what I'm going to say, too, before we get started? Shout out. I told you this, too, man. Shout out to Blue Hands, because I don't even know him. I had no idea he was born in Galveston. That was pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to that homie, too, man. Y'all got to go check out the Ferguson Chronicles, man. It's unbelievable. Everything that you heard of OG Percy talking about, every person that he mentioned is already on Hollywood's channel. You know what I mean? So you can go see who he was talking about and how they're living now. And I'm real impressed by all of those men. If you want to know the truth, a bunch of them are doing real good, and it's kind of like we kind of like we like to see. So, listen, Hollywood, we're gonna we're gonna pick up where we left off last time. If y'all didn't see the last one, make sure y'all check it out. And uh, we did ten years Hollywood serve Ferguson unit, then ten years use unit where the escape just happened from, and we're gonna go into that after we get into this a little bit. So you want to stay tuned, but. Your last five, you told us, they shipped you from the used unit to Beat 01, okay? You went from the red brick building in Ferguson to the newer style unit at used. What's Hollywood thinking when he pulls up to the back gate of Beat looking at that metal door and that big brick wall and shit? Oh, man, uh, once again, here we go. You know, it's kind of like, man, uh, like I explained last time, man, anytime you pull up in uncharted territory, man, uh, not so much you got to reintroduce yourself to the people in the system, man. You just got to reintroduce yourself to the system itself. You see what I'm saying? And uh, the things that the things that's you know that's 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 in the environment, man. In other words, I like to call it a uh, expensive pain, man. You know what I'm saying? Because when you pull up, you gonna have to uh, you gonna have to display who you are, and you gonna have to show real character again. In order to uh, get the respect of the people that's on the unit, man, that's just the way that is. Right, right. That's a fact, and that's for everybody. It don't matter if you've been down twenty years or it's your first day, right? No, you are gonna get tried, man. You know, it, it, the thing about that though, man, is one or two ways you can get tried, man. Uh, from somebody that's been down there for a long time, 
they might not try you physically, but they're gonna try you mentally, man. Because you know one thing though, just like you know the game, they knew it too. Absolutely, yeah, for right, that's facts. And then you don't know what the game even is as you're showing up brand new. They might have something different going on, you know. When I when I first got to Beto, you know, they bring you through the back door, you go in the hallway, they got the legi office standing around and talk to them and everything. Then when you finally coming down, the first thing you do is hit medical and they got that cage with all them people right there and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Well, when I came down, I'm a white boy and they didn't know what the hell was going on. They was yelling and screaming at me, trying to scare me, all this other stuff. You know what I'm saying? I told everyone, I'm, yo, I'm going to population. I see y'all when I get over there. I ain't finna do no talking across the fence right now. That's the only thing I can think to say. I'm pretty sure I said the right thing, too. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't show no fear. Even though I'm like, damn, it's a bunch of men right here hollering at me. <laughs> I realized later that that was just a pure entertainment game they was playing. Nobody yeah. meant nothing they were saying. You know what I mean? Nothing. It was literally just to see what you do. And I'm literally just not even paying attention. So after I said I'm going to population, don't even worry about it. Then I went to UCC. You know what I mean? And they walked me right to K Wing. But when you showed up, I'm pretty sure you coming down the stairs, you big as can be. You know what I'm saying? Yoked up. 20 and probably got a look on your face too. Did anybody in that case say anything to you? Well, like I say, when I hit the unit, man, uh, you know, it's a bunch of guys I already was, uh, you know, was, was my name was already out there, right? Due to the fact because of how long I had been down there. So at the same time, you still gonna have other dudes that's been hearing about you and they want to see. Are you really about that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So this is what I'm hearing in that same black cage. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but not so much was I worried about them, you know, getting at me because one thing, I'm a neutron. So it, it, even if it do go down, it's only going to be with one person. You see what I'm saying? Right. Explain to them what a neutron is. We never talked about that. A uh, neutron is, man, somebody that's not affiliated in any game. You standing on your own, and whatever go down, it only goes down with you. You know what I'm saying? So that's what a neutron is, man. And I was there for 25 years. I wasn't a part of nothing, man. Right, right, right. 25 years, one deep. Uh, and a neutron is not a disrespectful. For the people watching, that's not a disrespectful word or anything. It's just a slang word for neutral. You're the neutral person. You know what I mean? And there's a... If you're a neutron white person, you're a wood. If you're neutron Mexican, they call you Solano. If you're black, you're probably just neutral neutron. You know what I'm saying? But it's all three about the same. So so you come on down. You see UCC that day right then. What did they tell Hollywood? Don't come over here starting no trouble in my prayer. Were they giving you a speech? Or what What was, the, what was UCC telling you? Oh, uh, you know the spiel. Don't bring that first shit over here. You That's know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't, 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 don't bring that shit over here. And the number one thing, man, leave my officers alone, you know, because after so long, after I had been in the system, man, it wasn't about being physical no more. You know what I'm saying? It was two things that existed with me. Number one will always be it was hustling. You see what I'm saying? And and and, and that was the, uh, the, you know, the rules and regulations that I stood by, man. You know, I'm going to bring the hustling game over here. I'm not bringing the physical part of me, however. If it had to go down to that, then that's what they would. Yeah, absolutely, of course. You know, I already know. Uh, so you, you, I know you hit them with some game. Tell them ain't gonna be no problems. Y'all can go and put me back in population, everything like that. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure they sent you to the north side. You went straight to the north side. Straight to the north side, P. Wayne, medium custody. You went straight to medium custody. Straight to medium custody, man. And I can remember like it was yesterday. Medium custody, two rows. Two row 15 cell right in front of the window. When they bring you in, is everybody locked in a cell or is it day room time? No, it's day room time. So you already know when you come through the cell, they they in the day room. So whenever you come on the block, you got all your gear with you and you got somebody else treading you. So you already know where they at. Everybody attention turn from the one-eyed devil to the front door. You know, who who is the new guy? What he about? What cell he going to? First thing the SSI do, you know he gonna come up there and say he won't holler at you in the day room. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. 
I had to sit right there and wait on the in and out. I'm talking about wait a long time, just sitting there with folks staring and shit. You know what I'm saying? Trying to figure out who to talk to. It was a nerve wracking feeling for me. I ain't gonna lie because that was my first ID unit like that. You know what I'm saying? And as you said, it's kind of like a record, a needle scratching across that record, and everybody's yeah, standing yeah, at yeah. you. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's 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 crazy. And all this all this mental pressure is coming at you at once at one after another after another you know what i'm saying so when hollywood gets a p wing on beat one which is, is one of the most notorious wings in the system ain't no doubt about that t uh p u all them you know what i'm saying all that p t u going on back that way uh mm -hmm. you already know you got to be about that life man what whatever that life is about you gonna have to be about it yeah it's, it's super gladiator style over there nobody can't say that for sure that's why I say Ferguson Ferguson right now has the biggest name and is the scariest. But when I showed up to Beto, that was a 600-man swap where literally they didn't trade 600 men from there, Ferguson and French Robinson. So it was just like a big mixture of everybody getting there. It was a lot of chaos going on and stuff like that. But uh, I digress. My fault. But anyway, listen, when you get to P-Wing, medium custody, where it's super unfriendly, what's the first thing happen? You see somebody you know? Oh, yeah, I've seen a few cats I know, man, because like I said, you know, I had been in that system for so long. So, uh, you know, uh, what they did is when you cause ruckus on another unit, they ship you to another unit, you know. So it's kind of like a big monopoly. You just run, went around in circles. So you're going to know somebody you know. And the only way you don't know somebody you know is if you knew, you real knew, and you just get to the system. But if you done done double digit years, you're going to know somebody, man. So, uh, yeah, I knew I, I knew a few cats, man, and uh, you know, it wasn't like that they was just uh pushovers, you know. So they had say so uh on the block, man. So they gave me the rundown on what was going down, what wasn't, wasn't going down, and you know, and how it's gonna go down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Talk about that for a minute, cause I know you got your turn more than a little bit. When a man is actually the one, he's speaking, he's running stuff. How much power do he got? How much say so do he really got? Well, here's the thing, man, and I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get the people too misconfused about uh, having so much power to where they think that you just run it all, right? That ain't the case. Now, your say so is because the uh, the other real dudes that's in the surroundings, man, that's the respect that they have for you, and not only that, you can recognize things that they couldn't recognize, which was it might be something to jump off in the day room between Hispanics, whites, Crips, Bloods. So that's the that's the power you get from your peers, man. For one, if uh it ain't no way to word it if, if you black, you ain't speaking for no Hispanics. You know what I'm saying? Right, of course. And if you black, you ain't speaking for no whites. You only gonna speak for your race. But if you're not well respected, you don't have a say so, man, at all. That's that's right. And listen, what well, basically what you just told me and what I got from that is, you calling the shots from respect, not fear. No, you know no, it's it, it's no it's no fear factor. Period, man. You know what I'm saying? Because you gotta remember, what neutralizes a man in a situation, especially when I went to prison, was that sword. You know what I'm saying? If I was too scared of you, I got an equalizer that'll take care of that. You see what I'm okay. saying? Uh-huh. Yeah, hell yeah. Everybody got it too. Anybody can get one anyway. Yeah, everybody got it. Everybody got it. And, and, and in that era, wasn't nobody scared to use it. You right, see what right. I'm saying? Right. Yeah, wasn't so nobody listen, scared to listen, use it. This one I'm asking, this is my next question then. As you come from Ferguson, where you got the the big respect. You come from use where you got big respect. You showing up to Beto right now. Is Hollywood thinking, man, I'm finna take this over too? Probably I'm gonna be the one running this pretty soon. Is that going through your mind? You knowing it's finna happen? Well, I mean, the, the thing about that, man, is that you don't automatically initially think that, right? Because that'll be disrespect to anybody that was doing that when you got there, right? It's kind of like, man, you you have to sit back and uh and let things fall into place, man. Because like I always say, man, uh sometimes you can move so fast to where you really play yourself out of position, man. 
So uh, I never did that. I never thought that due to the fact because uh, I wasn't, I, I wasn't, I, I wasn't, I wasn't a new boot. You know what I'm saying? I was a convict, so I knew how that went. You just sit back and you analyze the situation, man. Uh, they gonna, you know, the, the, your peers around you is gonna uh, award you what needs you uh, for you to be awarded with, man. Yeah, no, I, I know. Yeah, so that was that was my OG second. One second. I would hold on a second. Man, I'm sorry, man. I told you this shit gonna happen no matter what. Man, man. It's all good, man. We always it, it's everything, you know, everything understood don't need to be explained, man. Right. If we talk to him for one second and give him give him a little something, and I'm gonna be right back, brother. I apologize. It's all good, man. For so so for anybody out there, man, like just like uh just like Tim said, man, that the respect level, man, is always is always earned, it's never given, man. And at any moment, man, you can have that respect taken away from you, man, if you make the wrong move, man. And not only that, like I said, when I went, it wasn't about no fighting. Especially if a man was intimidated about you, what he would do, he would just send you home, man. And you can tell your family to break your plate, man, because you won't be coming home. Because guess what? They done ran the numbers up on you. And what I mean by ran the numbers up on you, man, they done gave you FI F out the back door, man. So that's how it was when I was dying up. Yeah, sorry about that, Hollywood, man. When I be saying single daddy, man, they don't understand. It's so hard to get somebody to watch this girl. And it's, then when they watch her, she's so used to being with me, she don't mind nobody else. So it's crazy, but I apologize. So check this out. When you hit Beto, you're 20 in now, you're on a life sentence. Are you thinking that I'm fixing to come over here and work my way home, or are you still prepared for that long stretch? I'm thinking about where that knife at. That's it. Because <laughs> uh, I'm looking at the deck, man. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter where you go. Anytime you get transferred to one of those units like that, man, where it's segregated in the day room, uh, uh, going home is the farthest thing from your mind, man, because at any moment, it might go down in the day room, and that thought that you had, had about going home, guess what? You ain't going. You That's ain't right. going. That's right. That's right. Uh, you remember, you remember Big Como? That was from Como. That was the SSR. He was missing in front too. Exactly. Yeah. You remember Como? Yeah, that was yeah. my dude, man. He, he's still there. You know, he's still there. No, nah, I ain't know he was still there, but I remember him though. Still there, same job, running it, man. Believe it or not, and uh, pretty sure by now he's probably speaking for the whole prison. Hell, he was half, half ass doing it back then for all the Crips. You know what I mean? For the '60s, anyway. Good dude, man. If anybody know him, shout out. So check it out. You did tell me a story and that's what they want to hear about right now you said uh i ain't gonna, i'm gonna let you tell it literally about the thing going in the day room that's what they want to hear. you want to get into it i ain't got no problem with that man but uh like i always say at the ferguson chronicle moment any story i tell is never scripted and all i can do is keep it 110 man because like i say uh it's, it's expensive pain man what i mean by expensive pain man sometimes you do your time and come home but if you make the wrong move, you pay with your life, man. You know what I'm saying? So uh, let me get right into it. So the story I'm going to tell, man, is about the time on P-Wang when it was a major ride, man. Major ride jumped out, man, due to the fact, man, because, you know, the benches were segregated in the day room, right? You had the Hispanics up front, your blacks up front, and uh, you had the whites on the back bench. But anyway, man, uh, no name, no names need to be called, man, because uh, they know who they are, man. And uh, I'm up under the old school law, man, so I like to keep all of it up under the head, yeah, man, too, because man. there was a lot of violence in that day room that day, even included on my end, right? So uh, we went to work, man. We went to work, man, and, and did what we did. But the reason why the ride took place, man, is because my partner got into a Hispanic guy, you know, and it was a one-on-one -on -one up under the TV, and uh. My partner got the best of him, and the Spanish couldn't uh, take that. You know what I'm saying? They couldn't take that because he swole both his eyes up and had him looking like a sleeve stack, so he couldn't see. You know what I'm saying? When he fell, stomped him out, 
and that was it. But they couldn't accept that, you know what I'm saying? But they pulled him on back to their side and, uh, you know, passed him up. Back then, ain't nobody going to jail because the law is going to let you do what you do, you know what I'm saying, as long as it's a one-on-one. So uh, we turned out for work the next morning, man. As you know, we go in both halves. We turn out for the work the next morning, uh, come back in the first half, get the drop. The drop was this, the SSI, go to the day room, doing what he do, sweeping, and find 13 knives on the Hispanic side, right? 13 so no, knives, you said? They found 13 knives on the Hispanic side. So when he found the 13 knives, what he did was uh, he held them till we came in, you know? And like I say, by that time that this jumped off uh, for that block, which was P Wang, I was on, uh, it was a group of us, it's collective, you know, collective group of us, which was we call, you know, real, you know? And what I mean by real, somebody meaning, hey, this shot gonna be called, and anybody that want, don't want to be involved, go to the house. Because when we right, fall right. back out, we're going to take care of the business with the same knives that they took from them, right? They was issued out to us. So we go back to, uh, we go to work, man, second half, and uh, we come back in, right? And when we come back in, uh, said, I make the call, man. I said, when we fall out for the child, man, this is how it's going to go down, man. So the knives was itched out, you know, the knives was itched out. But keep in mind, at that particular time when the knives was issued out, you might have had a Mexican selling. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You might have just got through eating with your selling. But now when you fall to this day room, he finna die. Or you finna die. So you have to choose which side you gonna be on when you go to this day room. That's why the shots was called and say, hey man, when you get ready to come back out for the day room, this eye is going down. If you don't want to be involved, stay in your house. But if we don't make that stand in that day room that day, then we lose all the way around. All right. So we go to day room, man. I never forget, like yesterday, you go to day room. You can tell there was so much tension in the air. The TV was on, but ain't nobody watching TV. The day room is still, even even the hot air was still, with nobody moving. You know what I'm saying? With nobody moving, everybody was watching everybody. So, the Spanish called me over there to say, "How do let me holler at you?" I'm like, "What's up?" When I got ready to move, keep in mind I'm not moving by myself because it could be a setup. So. Three of my homies, they move with me. So we all in the middle of the floor, we talking. And we're like, hey, man, you know, it's, it's a misunderstanding. We're going to let that go. We're going to let that go. So by that time, we go back to the other side, which is what we call Africa. So we go back to Africa. We do what we do. So they like, man, what you going to do? I say ain't no calling it off. It's going down. So by that time, man, shit is like something back in the uh, – the class of the Titans. But the only thing about this here, Tim, is the weapons that they had, we got them now. Yeah. Did they know it at this time? You think they checked yet and realized they empty? Yes. That's why they want to call it off. That's why they want the truth. You know what uh -huh. I'm saying? They want the truth because they already know we 13 up. We 13 up. Not only are we 13 up, but we heat it up when we come to the day room with what we brought to the day room. Now, I'm not saying that they didn't have anything in the day room because they did. And the sad part about that, man, is when it went down, uh, I had a partner in them, man, R.I.P. He only had two years, man. You know what I'm saying? A youngster only had two years, man. And he was trying to show up for the home team. And in him trying to show up for the home team, uh, he got killed, man. He only had two years, man. So, and you you know, like I know, the ride ain't over with until they stop shooting the gas. Yeah. 
Yeah, let them know that's a rule. Like literally, that's a penitentiary rule. Ain't nobody stopping till that gas come, right? Yeah, ain't nobody stopping until the gas come. You know what I'm saying? So for anybody that might be watching this, that uh, I don't want them to distinguish between being in prison in the 2000s versus when I was in there. You know, because for now it's more. Uh, how should I say this? It's more mental than it is physical. You know what I'm saying? Right. And the race wars are not as bad. Not to say that it's not racist, because you know, at some times it can get like that. You know, but like you know, like I know Tim, uh, you had sections where you had to sit at. You know what right. I'm saying? And you had to make you had to make a decision on where you was gonna be sitting at. So on that particular day, man. Uh, that individual man only had two years, man, and uh, he didn't make it home, man. He didn't make it home. When the dust settled and everybody was getting pulled out of the day room, and it was a lot of stabbings went on on that particular day, man, on Pete Wayne. That probably was the most bloodiest day I ever seen on that wing, man. You know what I'm saying? And not only uh, was the work being put in on them, they put some work in on us, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I took one to the gut, but I didn't die. It was just fortunate enough, man, that uh, I wasn't running from the knife. See, when you run from the knife, that's when you're going to get killed. You know, it's kind of, it, it, it's funny, man, but when you take it to to the knife, so you, you uh, somehow survive. But when you take off running, you're going to get it to the back, man. And, yeah. uh, yeah, man, uh, only had two years, man. And when they pulled him out, man, he got stuck 14 times, man. Died in the day room. Only had two years, man. Didn't That's make sad. it back home to mama. That's a sad story, man. And I really, I did not want you to tell that just for uh, shock value or anything. I wanted you to tell that for them people out there that's borderline criminals might get in trouble. You know what I'm saying? With a two-year sentence, y'all, you can never see mama again sometimes. You know what I mean? Whether you get killed or now you might got to kill somebody. You never know what's going to go on in this penitentiary. You know what I'm saying? So imagine doing this for 25 years of your life. And now you see what Hollywood is right now. You know what I mean? So listen, when that happened right there, that's some pretty serious shit. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, you're healing up. You, you, you got it in the gut. You're healing up. Why are you thinking about everything? Are you thinking right now, I'm getting too old for this shit? Or are you mad, ready to get back? Like, now nah, we need some get back. No, nah, man. The thing I was thinking, man, was this here to be honest, man. Because, uh, you know, when you go through that every day, man, and it was an everyday basis that you went through that every day, man, you kind of ask yourself, man, the crime that you committed, right, was it really worth it, man? Was it really worth it? And that's what I used to ask myself, man. Was it really worth me getting the life sentence for it, man? You see what I'm saying? But I'm pretty sure you said no to yourself, didn't you? Oh, yeah. The answer was that the answer was always no. The answer was always no. That's the reason why I say what I say, Tim. Expensive pain, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because you you don't you don't gain a lot, you lose a lot. You know what I'm saying? 89% of my life, man, was spent in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, man. And that ain't and, 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 and that's not bragging. You know, that's not no, bragging, man. No, not at all. No, and that's one thing I'll give you props right here on this video. Like I told you earlier, the reason that I'm working with Hollywood right now and that I respect so much about them is because yes, they do tell real true day room stories, tell stuff like that. But every one of the men that he's doing is in a better place right now, usually. You know what I'm saying? With including himself. And I'm proud of you, man. You know what I'm saying? And like, uh, shit, I'm proud of all of us that are staying out of trouble. You know what I mean? It's not easy. The cards are stacked against you. But it's been like that the whole time you was on the inside, too. So you're kind of used to that. You shouldn't. No pressure out here should have you folding if you can make it in there. You know what I mean? So respect to that, man, for just literally coming out and telling yourself you ain't going back. And, uh. Hollywood, y'all, one thing about it, he's fixing to come out with some fire merch. You know what I'm saying? So y'all better pay attention to his channel. He showed me he literally got uh, everything that you can imagine. He got a print shop at his house, basically. You know, and, and Hollywood, when you showed me all that today, 
I know a lot of people that make t-shirts and stuff like that, but you just a little bit more advanced than the regular. You know what I'm saying? Uh what's your plans with that? Are you gonna you gonna like put out some uh merchandise? Don't give your ideas away, but you literally gonna start trying to sell some stuff too. Well, man, you already know, man. Like I told you, you know, like we you know, like we discussed earlier, man. You know, uh what I try to do, man, I always try to weigh my options out, man, because I understand, man, if the risk is not greater than the reward, then the answer should always be no. That's that's how I operate, man. And, and it took me 10 years to even get on this on YouTube, man. You know, and, and, and the reason why it took me so long, man, because of, you know, I, you know, dudes have it misconstrued about telling what's real and what ain't real, you know, and there's no knock on nobody for doing that. Because I know people look at it as a, as a hustle, right? But the way I look at it, this right here, man, is that uh, it's kind of like when you went to war, right? If I went to war side by side with a man and we killed to survive or some, I lost some of my friends in the line of duty, right? I wouldn't want other people telling that story man so yeah. that was my main reason for even coming out to tell these stories man not to you know like i said not to uh uh not to capitalize off no, of no it. no it's, it's never to capitalize on anything that has happened to one man or one woman in a situation man and it's and it's damn sure not to glamorize me doing 25 years I hate that more than anything, Tim. I hate that more than anything, no, man. No, that's, that's, you don't. You would, man. Oh, listen, man. You wouldn't even be here if you was doing that. And everybody knows that there's no glamorization to prison. And I've said it a million times. Beware of any man telling you a painful story with a smile on his face, because that don't make sense to me. That's, that that does not compute. And y'all take that how you want to. And I say that to anybody. Beware of a man telling you a painful story. And laughing about it because most people gonna cry if it's real. You know what I mean? That's just exactly, fact. Right? man. You know, you so know, it's uh, you know, it's, and, and once again, that's why I say, man. Uh, I wake up every day, you know, and people might not realize, man, that that in which what they see is on the outside, right? The exterior part has no pain, man. But when I look back over them years and the things I did, not only to other people. But to me, from a mental standpoint, you feel what I'm saying? Uh -huh. It was a lose lose, man. Hey, one of my moderators, excuse me, one of my moderators, y'all blocked that uh spam right there. We got some weird old spamming in here with some sexual stuff. Y'all uh take care of that for me, please, somebody. But no, nah, yeah, no, nah, listen, man. That's why I'm saying my channel, I never even knew that you could make some money when I started this, really. I didn't do that. And one of my very first videos, I said straight up that a lot of people come home and misrepresent their time that they had to their little brothers, to their cousins, to their friends. And, you know, they might've had a painful trip and they'll come home and go, man, that wasn't nothing. And here goes their little brothers, cousins, and friends thinking the penitentiary ain't nothing. You know, I say it all the time. Even the friendliest prison in the world still takes you from society, still removes you from pretty women, still takes you from good food. You can't see your parents. You can't see your kids. It's the being there, that's the punishment you know what i'm saying and it's a hell of a punishment so everything else is just extra you know what i mean so that's why i'm i'm honored to have you here right here you know what i'm saying a real serious man because we don't joke and play about it here we we let them know that ain't what you want you know what i mean you're gonna you're gonna come out with uh cholesterol through the roof and all kind of stuff messing with that place and you know what you told me something earlier today about former inmates catching cancer talk about that a little bit so man, check this out. Uh, it was evaluated by a few a few friends of mine. You know what I'm saying? And uh, a couple of them has uh, caught cancer, right? And not the small form of cancer, the real cancer, due to the fact because of the things that were sprayed on the, uh, the 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 vegetables that was growing in the fields, right? So imagine them coming through in the in the plantation, right? spraying cancerous chemicals on plants right and you coming in the back uh picking them so 
you're doing this for two halves for years, right? You're doing this for two halves for years. So those cancer chemicals has no choice but to enter your body, right? And once they enter your body, they're going to mutinate. And what they're going to do, man, is they're going to give you some form of cancer, whether it be small or whether it be big. However, once you are released to society, that cancer releases into your body, man. And most men that come home, they'll be healthy or they might look healthy and they decide to not go and get checked out. But the very first time they go to the uh you get a physical checkup, uh they tell them, Hey man, you've been tested for cancer, right? And uh what they would have to do, man, is is remove the cancer and go to chemotherapy, man. After 15 or 16 or probably 20 years in prison, man. And all that came from the chemicals that they were spraying on the food out there in the fields in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, man, that you was forced to pick every day because of the crime you committed. And for yeah. those that don't believe it, it's a lawsuit pending right now on the Texas Department of Criminal Justice that's been filed by inmates because they've caught cancer in prison, man. Facts. Man, listen, everybody in the world knows what is the number one way you catch cancer? Dealing with chemicals, unnatural things, you know what I mean? And they literally have men out there in close quarters with and surrounded in fields full of pesticides. And you can guarantee some of them pesticides later on were banned, stuff like that. They probably was using the shit that nobody else was using at the time. You know what I mean? Uh, here goes one of the tricks that they talk about Hollywood, where they raise the where they raise all the cows and slaughter beef and all this. That's grade A beef. They take that and sell it, and then they buy grade B beef and feed the inmates. People don't understand there's stuff like that going on. You know what I'm saying? Were you there when they did the Vita Pro thing? Come on, man. I was there. They, was I there? I know you was. Tell us about I it. What was, it was like? It was like, uh, just say, for instance, it was another form of uh, wet dog food. In other words, what I'm saying, uh, it was every, to me, every meal that was served was Vita Pro. It was served like spar spaghetti, bro. Cause it was all meat sauce, right? And the Vita Pro would cause you to have big balls up on your arms, right? You'll get sick because uh, what they did when they did the research on it, it was made for animals, man. It was made for animals. But what TDC was doing, they was cutting the funding with the Vita Pro and bringing it in and serving it to the inmates and pocketing the money, man. That's all they was doing, you know. One of my friends, I ain't going to say who or where. How about this? One of my friends helped a lawman take a forklift home one day. Literally stole a forklift from the penitentiary, took it home and got away with it. And I don't know how they how they wrote that on the paperwork, but there's some amazing things that they can do to line their pockets. You know that? We talked about that. Hold on. Listen, excuse me. We talked about that with your dad. You remember when I talked yeah. about Eroy Brown? Well, what even happened with with him was they were stealing out the tire shop. They were doing weird stuff, stealing out the tire shop, doing all kind of things. And the boss man heard him say, man, with all this money these laws making, they should be treating us just a little bit better. And when they heard him say that, that was him bucking. They ain't supposed to ask to be treated better back then. It was a black inmate. He was an inmate. You know what I'm saying? He didn't give a damn. You heard what your daddy said. They called him back there and everything else. So, yeah, I mean... Man, look, look, man. I'm going to say this here. I made a personal video about that, right? And the personal video was pertaining to the fields. And just like you went two halves, I went two halves. But on Ferguson, when you went two halves, and uh, I ain't afraid to say his name, white sergeant, racist as hell, his name was motherfucking Sergeant McBride, right? And I'm working in the fields, coming in. And this is what they would do. Any black man with size, that's the black man going to get challenged. Because when they looked at you, they looked at you as a slave. Right. You know, 
those were the ones that they put lead row, tail row, right? You would find the certain black man that had size, he would be the lead row or the tail row. And those were the men that were in charge of those lines, man. This man told me, Tim, hey, nigga, the only thing I like black is my boots. And the only reason I wear these boots is because I'm forced to. That's you crazy. Know? That's crazy. They're out there playing plantation in their mind, ain't they, man? Yeah. But 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 the, the reality part of it, bro, it was real. You was tied up in a system that was legalized slavery. Yeah, I have That's an entire video was. about that. That slavery never ended in Texas. Listen, this this how it went, Hollywood. Back in the day. I, I did a whole research on this. When you was black and you was in slave time, stuff like that, you couldn't go to prison. Prison was only for white people. Literally, the slave master took care of you. You know what I'm saying? As soon as they freed slaves, they start mass incarcerating black people and leasing them back out as prisoner slaves. They just kept it going in Texas. You know, Juneteenth is coming up. That's the holiday from Texas. It started in Galveston because Texas held our slaves two years too long and refused to let them go. That's the environment we're dealing with down here. And almost every prison is an ex-plantation. How about that? I heard tell that they might change the name of East Ham real soon because it is actually named after the slave owners that own the property. You know that? That's exactly. how crazy. But see, what, what used to get me was this, man, because now when you would go to the fields, right, not only – did the uh, Caucasian officer act as a slave master? Every now and then, they would hire a black or an Hispanic, right? And you would think the black man would give you some type of leeway, right? He gonna blend in with the system, right? And the system treated you just as you were a slave, man. It wasn't. It wasn't no different, man. Sarah, so, take that one out, Sarah. Welcome. I'm sorry. Listen, I want to ask you something. In all your time, I know the answer, but show these viewers. In 25 years of slave labor that you gave these people from cooking for them, working in their fields, to everything that you ever did, tell these people how much the state of Texas paid you in all 25 years. When I got out, the state of Texas gave me a $50 check. 50 bucks. It's so bad to where they cut it from giving you $200 to $50, right? And not only that, uh, when you go to cast the check after, after being locked up for so long, the only thing you have is a Texas, what? Texas Department of Criminal Justice ID, uh -huh. right? So... You're going to get second guessed on that. They're going to want you to show them their ID. And you ain't going to have no uh, a, a Texas Texas driver's license to show them. So they're not going to cast the check. That's the type of problem I went have. That's the type of problem I had after being locked up for 25 years. I know it. What he's saying, 25 years worth of labor, they gave him 50 bucks. Tell them about your, your contact info real quick. I'll be right back. Let me go get them. You can know, always contact me, like I said, uh, on YouTube. You can always look up OG Hollywood, the Ferguson Chronicle, where we only keep it 110. And the stories that the man tell on the Ferguson Chronicle is always accurate. And nothing is ever scripted or rehearsed. And you can look me up on IG. But I prefer you to go to Facebook and look me up. And get that, get, get that, get that knowledge from uh, YouTube, get the knowledge from YouTube. You can get all, everything you need about the Ferguson Chronicle and OG Hollywood is on YouTube. Yep, as a matter of fact, there goes the banner right there. Oh, all right, Hollywood, I'm gonna get you on something else. I watched on one of your videos today that was so true and I never even clicked to it, man. I guess, I don't know, I guess, cause I'm white shit. I don't know what the hell I didn't tell them about the racial disparity between the jobs in prison. So, uh, the racial jobs between the uh, disparities in prison is this, man. Uh, 
when you come to prison, and you know, some people might say, oh, he's just saying that because he's black. No, I'm speaking facts. When you come to prison, the black man was given an SSI job, laundry, a food service. SSI is what that explain to them. They don't know what that is. Well, an SSI is what we call in society now as a janitor. You know, as a janitor, you spend most of your time cleaning up every block of your new unit. You assign to a block, and that's your block. You are responsible for cleaning that block up and make sure it's clean on a daily basis. On a new unit, which will be a pod, you are assigned to clean that pod up. And that job we give it will be given to blacks and Hispanics. Now, it's a different story if you're coming in as a white boy. And like I said, I'm speaking facts, not racist. I'm speaking. No, you facts. are, but I, I didn't even realize this until you said it. This is real facts. He's telling y'all. I'm speaking facts. If you are, and it's not, and, and it's not the the white inmates fault it's not the white inmates fault that the system is set up like this it's so segregated to where they've made the job segregated for inmates if you are a white individual going into the Texas Department of Criminal Justice your job would be maintenance you will be placed in maintenance and don't even know anything about fixing anything that's what my last job in the feds was maintenance. maintenance i didn't even know what was happening to me i didn't even know i was part of no no play like that oh hispanic people what are they gonna get hispanics the same thing that they do in society now and there's no knock on the hispanics but you will be placed in the yard squad you will tend to every piece of blade of grass in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. That would be an Hispanic job in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. Yep. So listen, Facts. basically, they're telling you what Hollywood explained in his other video, which was pretty damn deep, man. I, I swear I wanted to slap myself. Like, how you never noticed this, man? I feel stupid. But he's basically saying, and they say they give you these jobs to prepare you for the outside. So they're basically saying, black man, you're going to be a janitor when you get out. Mexican man, you're going to go cut some grass and white man we're gonna teach you how to fix stuff you know what i mean it's unbelievable but it's almost always like that so let me ask you this here tim let me ask you this now that you uh recognize the setup right we've both been free in society right what do that setup look like in, in the world now when you look at when you look out your window what do you see that's maintaining lawns in any state that's gonna be the hispanic guys nine times out of ten for sure yeah exactly when yeah. you look out your window and you have anything that's wrong with your home who comes to fix it and yeah you're right oh man listen here hispanics gonna do all that down here you know what i'm saying i ain't gonna lie they're gonna work uh who gonna own the company probably paying the hispanics no dollars is some white guy and he's gonna have the hispanics working for him around here you understand that's what's going it's crazy and then too i don't know where the uh where does the black man janitor thing come in though is that just they just trying to put you in your place or what i, I don't i don't know a lot of janitors i don't think uh all janitors are black or nothing like that they just trying to turn you into one what the hell are they trying to do with that i can't i can't i just realized it this morning hollywood so i can't wrap my brain around it. i'm telling you you're just a janitor for life type shit. i mean i don't understand it it's but what wrong. i'm telling you what i'm telling you is this man is that and it's not like i said it's not to have a knock on anybody that's choose to uh pursue that profession right it's just man that this is the the the, the eye and the sense and what they look at for the black man it doesn't matter where you at whether you're in prison or whether you're free right segregation is always going to exist man and that's just what that is so you know and and, and like i say it, it's not to sound racist or segregated you know it's just facts man it's facts they are preparing you for when you get out as a black man 
to go clean up a house. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah. That just thinking about it or saying it like that is just only man. It's crazy, man. How about that? Let me moderate my own video. Hold on a second, man. They not thinking about it. I got all the damn right? moderators, and ain't nobody taking care of them. Over there. I don't know what's going on. Hold on. You know, I have porno spam. That's crazy. Get rid of that moderator. If you got a wrench, somebody come help me, man. All right, I'm sorry about that. All right, we're gonna get on a different subject right now. And if y'all want to hear more about that topic, which highly interesting, he literally has an entire video about it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's pretty deep. And this is something that he observed over 25 years. I guess that's why I didn't I don't have 25 years in the system and I didn't get to see things time and time and time and time and time and time again like you did. But literally the whole 25 years that was the setup, wasn't it? So before let me I see a question in in, in, in your in your in your chat right here, right? And it, it, the guy's name is Donald Johnson. He said he was on Bo in Beaumont, Texas, right? In the commissary, all the guys were black, right? So let me address that if you if if you if, if I you know if I can do that, man. Yeah, of course. If you work in the commissary, right? You are an SSI. Commissary worker is an SSI. That's what it goes up on SSI. It doesn't say you are uh, a certain type of commissary worker that's going to work in the commissary. You're an SSI. All right. You in there cleaning them there too, huh? Exactly. You're an SSI. It doesn't mean it does it, it doesn't separate you because you're throwing food out of the window, right? You're an SSI that works in air condition. Yeah. Hey, when you went to Beto. Was the commissary man still there that take your car and throw it way down the hallway if you didn't have no money on your books? Are you talking about no? That was we was on you know first. Yeah, uh -huh. you had to go way back to get at him. His name was Peter Hunter. We had one on Beto that was doing it though. He would do it to you. Yeah, I'm talking about loud and oh. You throw that thing. I felt my first time ever seeing that. Somebody had to go run down there and chase the ID, and then everybody mad at him because. They only call 10 men at a time and they might not even run the whole wing. You went up there with no money. That's the problem, man. You see what you just said? They only call 10 men at a time. How long, when you was on Beto, how long did that take for them 10 men to go to commissary? It took a long time and they never finished the whole wing. They did, they ran out of time and they would skip to the next wing. And if you was one of the last people, you had to wait on stuck out. And then some people went to school and would miss stuck out. It was unbelievable the games they would play with commissary. You know what I'm saying? Like them 10 might be out in the hallway going to commissary and then get stuck for count time or something like that. You know what I'm saying? And then now where's the next 10? You got people that sitting in the day room with their bags for two days, literally for two days waiting on it. Was it like that when you was there? Exactly. It was like that all the time when I was there. Cause like I told you, I was on medium custody. So most of the time we stayed on lockdown 45, 45, you know what I'm saying? And it wasn't no respect. It wasn't no respect as far as, not going to commissary. Nobody didn't care about commissary over there, man. They didn't care about no commissary. I'm telling you, it was so racist over there, man, that you could be doing a 45 day lockdown to get ready to come off. And as soon as you come to the day room, guess what? Somebody else gonna start fighting. So it's back to week one, day one. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's back to week one, day one. That's crazy, man. Listen, I'm gonna tell one quick story of how they do us. I cannot remember this loud man name. I'm gonna have to figure it out. When they would call commissary, he come to the door. You already know. Ten for commissary. Everybody run to the bars and hold their ID out through the bars. And, bro, he would do like this. He'd be like, oh, like he was fixing to grab your card and then grab the guy next to you real quick. You play games with you, break your heart. Like, you finna, man, I'm finna go get my food. And then, whew, grab the next guy. Literally grab ten from the back. Ten, you know what I'm saying? An odd, weird ten, man. And the yeah, they'd be gone. Like you say, take forever, man. Unbelievable. I couldn't believe none of that stuff. It was crazy. It was crazy. How does this spam shit keep coming back? Look at them comments, Hollywood. How does this keep coming back? Man, you know what though, man? It never seemed to amaze me, man. Whenever real touched the screen, man, that's what happened, man. So that's just what that is, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm finna get rid of that. Whenever cat. real touched the screen, man, that's what happened, man. So that's just what that is, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm finna get rid of that. Whenever yeah. real touched the screen. All right, we got KK. Take care of that, please. Get them mod right now. I guess they're not doing that job. Oh, sorry about that. Man, listen. So we're going to go on. Uh, 
Well, one question I'm going to ask you real quick, and you don't got to go in heavy detail. Can you explain the, the differences between you saying when you went from uh, Ferguson to Hughes to Beto? And and I mean, when I mean, basically the laws actions like were the laws when you first started in the in the early 90s, stuff like that. Were they more lenient? Did they get looser as you went or did the safe prison be us? Did it make it? make them tougher on you how did how did the police act in that evolution well i'll say this man you know when, when it first started out man it was every man for itself right it was every man for itself this i this how i got right here and i'm and, 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 and i'm gonna give you a story and explain this to you and and i'm gonna paint the picture for you to show how it changed right you can see a man get raped, right, Tim? You can see a man get raped in the cell, bleeding everything. Guess what the law man going to tell him? Get up. You didn't act like that when you stole that old lady purse. Uh -huh. So it was, it was no love for the inmate. You fear for yourself, bottom line, right? Later on, during my era, when it flipped over, after they took everything from you, the cigarettes, jack books, pictures, when they took all of that, they took that with them too. And then that's when they came in with the Safe Prison Act. All a man had to do is write an I-60 on you saying that you threatened him, and they're going to come get you and lock you up. Uh-huh. You're going to at least, at least to investigation at the minimum. And that's going to be 72 hours. Uh -huh. You're going to be in, in lockup for 72 hours for a piece of paper that a man put in on you versus back when I went in there, when it was every man for itself. You can see a stabbing, and guess what? They're going If you dead, they're going to pack you, send you on. If you're not, they're going to patch you up and tell you to get your ass back down to the park or get your yeah. ass back down to the block. You know, and you got to go face that problem right then, too, all over again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. So, listen, we're getting, we're getting into an hour right here, and we're going to do a little bit of talking, y'all, about the escape. We talked about it last night, and what we what we did, what I didn't say last night was Hollywood, the man that, that escaped was on use unit. Okay, where he did 10 years at, and he was in SEG. They're not knowing how he caught the blade, got the, got the, uh, anything. They don't know how he did any of this shit. Hollywood described to them what process this man went to get on the chain bus coming out of SEG over there. So when you're in administrative segregation, right, you are, uh, it all depends on what you're in SEG for. Some people are locked down 23 hours a day. Some people never come out of the cell. I don't know his circumstances. However, when you come out of that cell, it's not a long ways to the chain bus. You come out, you literally take five or maybe 10 feet. You exit right. Two gates are open. You either leave on the big chain bus or a small medical bus. You enter that bus, and it's an officer. It's, it should be two officers on the bus, especially if you're on the bus of uh, the big medical, the big chain bus. And that officer has two weapons, which would be a, 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 a side a, a pistol and a shotgun. And he's sitting in another seat with a door locked, and the inmates are locked behind that door. So that's how he should have been locked up. Now, how he obtained a small hacksaw, which had to come from, as we both know, the craft shop. That had to come from the craft shop. Yep. And I don't know how he got on that bus with that with that hacksaw. Either it was two things. Those officers didn't shake him down. When he came out of his cell and they choose to shake him down when he hit, went behind the screen. And when you go behind the screen, all they do is just take your clothes, shake them, and they hand them back to you. 
It's no lift your nuts, spin around. It's none of that. Right. And it all depends on that officer. So right, if, right. It, it, it was those two things that allowed him to get on the bus with the hacksaw. They got too comfortable. They're on the staff. You know what I didn't tell them last night? I forgot. Here's the deal. As far as I know, anytime that they're transporting SEG inmates like that, there's supposed to be three officers on the bus, not two. They only had two officers on the bus, man. The Sarge that checks the, the, the restraints on your way out was probably supposed to ride on that bus with them. But he had Sarge had rank and didn't want to or something like that. You know what I mean? They're so short. They literally said TDCJ is so short staff right now that they're taking the bus drivers and making them work inside the building. You know what I mean? And literally their job is only supposed to be bus drivers and they're making them do building duty and stuff like that. Uh, right now we talked about it a little bit. I think I talked about it last night that this has created such a mess in Texas right now. This one man probably would have stopped the entire judicial system in Texas because right now nobody can catch chain. So any person with a uh, only thing, medical chain is still doing medical. Okay. You can go to the hospital, but nobody's getting picked up from a county jail nobody's getting transferred for a hardship if their family's dying right now people are missing their mama dying right now uh nobody's getting shipped for disciplinary they've shut the entire system down but what that means is the courts are about to backlog because they're literally just fixing to stop and hold off on cases you know what i mean because they don't they don't want to have sentenced men in there they, they literally have a time limit to get you out of that county supposed to after they sentence you so guess what now they have a lot of men PIA. Remember that parole in absence? Yes. Yeah. They're doing guys right now from the county that are sentenced parole in absence because they have to do something with them. They can't just keep them right there. You know what I mean? It's crazy what's happening. And this has affected everything right now. Like he literally has shut down everything. You know, people are, it's pretty amazing, man. It really is. Oh, tell me this though. Do you think? It's literally gonna change things for life in TDC, like transports and everything. Uh, what's going on? What do you think they're gonna do to go back to business as usual after they check the buses or what? I say it like this, man. And uh I'm gonna revert back to when the Texas Seven situation came along. Remember that? Uh -huh. When they changed the line classes, that's when they went to uh when you enter TDC. You would have to be a line one, remember? Yep. Versus being an S4. So it's going to have an effect on each and every individual, man, because it's going to hold everything up. And, yeah, it's going to change. If you waiting right now to go to a program so you can be released, it's going to extend your stay in prison. Right. If right. you are in Texas Department of Criminal Justice and you got an F5, any kind of F5 to be released to a program, you're not going to the program. So if your parents or your wife or whatever is waiting on you to come home, you're going to be stuck in prison for an extra couple of months or maybe six or seven months until they figure it out. Mm -hmm. Until they figure it out. And I don't think they're going to figure it out no time soon. What? He only been dead, what, a week mm -hmm. or two? Did you hear what I said yesterday that he has survival manuals in his book? I mean, in his cell, like literally books about how to survive in the wild wilderness. So those manuals or those books, right? Uh you can obtain that 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 knowledge in the library because you gotta remember, prison has a library, right? And now that they so short, we don't know. It probably was mailed in to him. But if you don't have no help in the mail room, who's gonna check the mail? Right. Oh man, yeah, it's crazy. When they say when we talking short staff, we we was laughing and joking about it, but it's really not funny. On Beto, they call short staff every day, man. You ain't seeing no wreck over there. You know what I mean? You might see wreck once every two weeks or something like that. You know what I mean? It's it's messed up, man. You literally spending your life on the inside. It's crazy. Hollywood, they ask them where you from. Don't tell them where you from. Leave them comments. I'm a born and raised in West Dallas, Texas, man. Born and raised in West Dallas, Texas, housing projects. You know, listen, West Dallas, South Dallas, Oak Cliff, man, them up the place notorious in the penitentiary for boys with fighting hands. You know what? We remember them, them uh Dallas dudes with the boxing gloves tattooed on. 
You know what I'm saying? My partner told me a long time ago, if you ever see anybody with some boxing gloves tattooed on, you might want to leave them alone. I mean, you know, it, it all depends on the person, man. So I can't co-sign that, Tim, because you got to be on them, too. <laughs> trying to brag if you got them on them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, That's so. All. But uh, I say this, man, because you already know I'm still in, uh, in close quarters with those boys that's going through the struggle, right? So now that it's short of staff, man, on a regular basis, right, they feed Johnny's Mondays. Wednesdays and Fridays. Oh, wow. Nobody's on lockdown half of the time, but they short a staff. So you don't even go to chow. They bring you a Johnny to the house. Hey, tell them what a Texas Johnny sack looks like. It's pitiful as hell. Man, look. It all like it all depends on who making your Johnny. If you know somebody in the kitchen, you're gonna get a nice Johnny. But if you don't, you're gonna get that peanut butter sandwich. That bologna sandwich and that ball leg, and you might get a small bag of razors. I was That's what you're gonna giving us prunes nonstop. Is what it was. Yep. Yeah, you're gonna get prunes. All, all that's including the Johnny. All that's including that Johnny sack. Well, like I say, if you know somebody that works in the kitchen, you might get your healthy Johnny. But like I say, man, that's what they're doing right now, and that's facts. I get calls from prison right now. And they said, man, we ain't even on lockdown. And they giving us three Johnnies a meal because they're so short of staff. That's crazy, man. And, you know, TDC, I don't know if you know this. They recently, everybody got a 15% across the board raise. And they're trying to, you know, trying to use that to get some new staff in or whatever. But it's pitiful, man. I say most of the most of the officers I've seen, the old school ones, they bad look like they was tired of being there. And they're just trying to finish out and get their retirement. You know what I'm saying? It's the new boots that are still rowdy and having fun, it seemed like to me. You think that's you think most of them yeah. really have out of there? But see, you remember when when the old schools what they call double dipping, huh? Yeah, they would yeah. they would yeah. they would retire and come back. They retire they again back. and come back and do it again. Yep. Yeah, they ain't coming back though. They staying away. You know what I'm saying? They're not coming back. I know a lot of them left and stayed gone because you know why? For one, man, when they when when we was doing the time, the twenty plus convicts that went home, and they started bringing all the new people in there, man. They was bringing it, and the thing about it, Tim, they was bringing the new ways from the streets. Right. It's the same thing, you know. What you getting in the streets now? Is what you getting in there, you know, and that's and, and that's what makes it so messed. Up. Look, man, just like I was talking to you the other day, I got brothers that still locked up past twenty five years, like the brother I was telling you that's still locked up for fifty two years. Uh -huh. How you think he feel? You know, man, I can't even imagine. You heard what I asked your father when we spoke. Like, what was it like coming back with this new wave stuff? And he he didn't like it. He literally said, I couldn't stand these kids running around with their pants hanging off their ass and being loud and stupid with no no supervision. You know what I mean? I know it's got to be hard to be there for the change. That's what I say. So even, even, with, even, even with me, with the 25 years, man, when I was seeing dudes go home every day, I was like, damn, when is going to be my time? Because I couldn't do it no more, man, because you can't get away with anything no more. You know what I'm saying? It's literally cameras everywhere in prison now. Every corner you turn, it's a camera right there. So what was the first year you seen cameras in prison? First I I see, you want to know the first year I seen cameras in prison? Ferguson unit, H block. They put one in there? Yes. And they put the camera in there due to the fact because it was so much dope coming through the unit. And they, and they installed a camera on H block, man. That's the first camera I ever seen in prison. And it was on the Ferguson unit, man. Was it catching people? Yes. It was installed right back there in the corner when they dropped the bean shoot at. And that's where most of the blacks stayed at. That's Fair where enough. they sit at on that back bench right there. You know what I'm saying? So that's where most of the drugs was coming in at, Tim. That's, oh, yeah. the, first, that's the first camera I ever saw. And when I saw that camera, I said, it's time for me to go. It's I hear that. Go. 
man listen when i got into it in the feds they jumped on me and all this other they had they did me a little interview in the uh they called the ss sis over there i think it's special investigative services or something they they were trying to get me to tell or whatever and basically let me know they're gonna ship me but i went into their office where they had all the tv screens and it was unbelievable how good them cameras was man like they could literally zoom in and read your hand on your cards or your dominoes or maybe read your letter that you're writing it was like some fbi type cameras they had in there it was unbelievable and we still would have a couple blind spots but not many you know i'm no, shouting that's it bro it's state of the art now on yeah. the huge unit you hear me it's so many cameras in there man it's cameras in the day room cameras on the passenger wreck yard right ain't nothing it's, it's 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 over man it's over man so my advice to anybody that's in society nowadays man and a man gonna do whatever he feel like he needs to do right but if you get caught up in that system you're gonna feel that expensive pain i'm talking about yeah man it's hard time down there right now it might not be like you said it might don't be as violent as it used to be but they're strict they're on you tighter rules they man, let's talk a little bit about this that we never talked about day room rules okay in texas day room rule how many channels did they have it beat up on the tv first not very many tbs uh couple local ones that's about it i remember tbs was the movie channel you remember that that's all they watched yeah, tbs up. tbs was it was what was the movie channel but what need to be talked about is uh how many people got their ass whooped over their tv well we'll get into that in a minute that's gonna be part of it. so listen <laughs> well i'm gonna put them in place now and, and put them in the day room y'all look at the thumbnail on this video that is an actual prison picture of a beat over one day room okay in that picture of the thumbnail you can see one tv in one corner but you can't see the one in the back corner okay there's two one in each one okay we're, we're gonna go into that in a second though but here's the rules in texas you're not even allowed to stand up in the day room you can't stand up no standing in the day room for nothing unless you're going to take a leak talk to the cop hand somebody something and get right back there's no standing and hanging out so one you're on a, a wing with about i think it's 198 people over there if i remember right if the guard is doing his job correctly he counts 99 men and then shuts the door everybody else got to go back so literally the rule there when i was there i'm sure when you was there only one cell made at a time comes out you know what i mean if it, exactly. it's going on if you and your cellmate are in the day room at the same time y'all probably tripping unless everybody's at school or something you probably tripping because then somebody else couldn't come out and that might cause you a fight right there you know what i'm saying because he has yeah. something he wanted to do it's, it's almost guaranteed so anyway when you're in this day room you're watching this one-eyed monster locked in this metal box that you can barely hear you gotta beg the officer for a channel check he's literally supposed to come once an hour with a remote control and let you change it and he might not do it all damn day unless you got a we actually owned a remote control in there, Cat from, Cat from uh -huh. Longview. Shout out to my boy Low Life. Low Life had a remote control. I don't know if he was there when you got there. Low Life. I was, know Low Life. That's my dude, man. He's coming up real soon for parole too, man. It's gonna be twenty five that he done. That's that's like my bro, man. I love Low Life. But check it out. Low Life had a remote control, and he would let us use it if he was going to his house. You know what I'm saying? So it was no big deal for us to change the TV. And then the boys in the back would have to come ask, hey, man, can y'all change this one for us? You know what I mean? And sometimes uh, no, I would have a remote put up, you know, so you couldn't even do it. But we had one remote control. Then they had to worry about batteries for it. That was you had to get that. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was hectic. But the rules is you can't change your own TV. You can't physically touch it because it's locked in the box. You know what I mean? And if you're anybody except that front row, you, it's you're out of there. You're just not going to hear it. So you got men watching movies tell tell them a little bit about that hollywood about the sports versus movie guys and all the drama that happens about the tv so man you know it was a my experience man with that tv man it, it, it and, and 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 what used to get a lot of dudes in the wreck man because like you said you got the tv in the box right and the texas thing was this especially when you got both Texas teams playing. 
Mm. Right. And Dallas and Houston at the same time, right? Yeah. So you had to come to an agreement on that. And sometimes it wasn't no agreement, you know. And when it wasn't no agreement, man, what's gonna happen is they're gonna unplug the TV. Mm. And once the TV is unplugged, man, you already know what's next. Everybody, you know? yeah, aggravation. Yeah. So that was my experience, man, with that TV, man. So uh and 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 that pretty much sums it up, like you just said, man. The TV was locked in the box, you know, but that's what brings back memories to me, man, when we couldn't come to an agreement on what game to watch, man. You Did know? it ever get bad with you with them Houston guys over the Oilers or the uh, oh, Texas? That, yeah, yeah, because, you know, just like I know, man, it wasn't no secret, man. Uh, I'm born and raised in Dallas, Texas, man, and other people was born and raised in Houston, right? So it was always a conflict with the Dallas and Houston, man. You know, you know, one city thought their city was better than the other city, right? Until, you know, until we got old and realized, man, it was all Texas, right. you know. But it was a lot of wars between Houston and Dallas, man. But you know what I never knew? I ain't going to lie, because when I got there, it was it was more gang shit at that time. You know what I'm saying? It was later. But, you know, it, it's still like there was a bench, a crib bench, four crib benches. One was a crib bench for Dallas. One was a crib bench for Fort Worth and us. Uh, I guess they was with Dallas. Then you had uh San Antonio and Austin had a bench, then had some other. Then we sat on the last bench that was just for the others from the small town homies, and we sat in the back. We had no chance of even hearing the TV whatsoever. You know what I mean? But it was literally, I don't know, man. That that TV shit is unbelievable. The guys that are movie watchers, tell them how serious they are about watching that movie too, though. Man, say, I put it like this, man. For the movie watchers, it was so serious to them when they used to call child, it's going to be somebody stay back to make sure that TV don't get changed yeah. if that movie was coming on uh, before child. That's how serious they was, man. They'll miss their meal yeah. to make sure nobody changes the TV. And when we're saying movie watchers, it's a strange, I never knew there was men like this. And I, I guess as I get older and I get busy, I don't have a lot of time to pay attention no more. But there are men here that hate watching sports. I don't know what it is about it. They can't stand it. They don't care. They get mad if you put football, baseball. They will let them men from Houston and Dallas almost kill each other over that one TV instead of just going, man, y'all can watch both games. Don't worry about it. Yeah. No, nah, they want to watch the same Adam Sandler movie for the 35th time. They know every damn word of this movie they're watching. You know what I'm saying? Rerun City. But they're going to sit there and watch and be glued to it. And you know, though, after I started watching them guys, I started realizing, man, I think these boys have just a hellified imagination because there's nothing left for you in here. I think they're literally immersing themselves in this movie and pretending that's them in a way that I never was able to do. I'm literally watching the dude play football, wishing I'm running the ball. I ain't watching the actor. You know what I mean? So... It was just different, different men like different things. But yeah, them TV, them movies, man, it was crazy. I literally, I had a homeboy. Shout out to my little homeboy Rico from the Southwest. Well, my, he's older, but short. Rico was the black guy in the feds that would fight you if he didn't get to watch Gunsmoke. A black guy over Gunsmoke. I'm talking yeah, about Gunsmoke. Gun, gun, oh. Yeah, but you gonna you gonna get all type of trouble over Gunsmoke. Man, listen, he came to my cell one day and said, "Tim, man, I need your help from now on." And when I got there, he laced me up, and we became like brothers, man. I'm talking about, man, I was one of my tightest friends I ever had in my life, and we was in the feds like that. He let us, I need your help from now on. I said, he said, what? Don't go out to that 12 o'clock wreck no more. I need you to come sit over here with me and watch Gunsmoke. He said, because they tripping up. I'm the only person that wants to watch it. If you want to watch it too, it's, it's official. We're watching it. I say, well, man, it's crazy. I'm finna go ahead and fight everybody from my partner over Gunsmoke or whatever. But I tell him, yeah. Okay, so literally every fucking day he's got me watching Gunsmoke, dog. And I'm like, you know, my daddy used to watch it. I'm going to watch it. And I literally started getting into Gunsmoke. And then soon it was over. No, nah, that's got to turn. They're going back to something else. But you know, this man, uh, he was probably five foot two, Hollywood. No, like five two, 
135, heart like a lion, though. You know what I'm saying? And he can watch his gun smoke with knife included or whatever. Whatever. He's literally sit there strapped up watching gun smoke, man. And I'm like, why is this so important, though, fam? Like, why do you care? Like, you willing to kill over gun smoke? And he was like, no, nah, I'm willing to kill over my respect. This is the only thing I got in this motherfucker is, like, I got gun smoke. You know what I'm saying? Other guys running yeah, shit. Yeah, going yeah. Down. Nah, this is me right here. And it was going to stay like that him. So shout out to my my big bro, Rico. You know what I mean? I seen little guys with hearts doing that shit. But it was crazy, man. Uh, is there anything else you want to touch on? Like anything that's on your mind? So let me tell you this here, man. This is what they not going to tell you. Even, even some of the regulars, right? Even some of the regulars was down there. But nothing weak about them, right? They love them stories. Oh, yeah. Them soap, them soap operas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had so many dudes down there. Victor Newman would get you killed. Man, listen, bro. I'm going to be honest with you. I first got to TDC, and uh, I was in Die Ball, transfer unit in Die Ball. And I was thinking, what the hell? I've never seen men willing to kill you over young and the restless. You understand? Like, I always thought, man, that's for my mama, man, because my mama would watch them stories. You know what I mean? I'm thinking this is some, really, I'm thinking in my head, man, this is some homo-type activity. What y'all doing? Okay, but then it's what happened. We're in an open dorm. They assigned me to bed by the TV. Literally, I can lay in my bed and watch the TV, okay? So homies would ask me, because can I lay in your bed, sit on your bed, watch the TV? You know what I'm saying? I want to watch uh, Young and the Restless. I'm like, man, come on. I guess so, man. You know, no problem, man. I go sit on that shit. Let them watch that. Relax. And then I got curious, though. And then I'm like, hold on. I guess I'm going to watch this one day. See what's going on. You know, I got cold hooked on Young and the Restless myself, man. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So on, I loved it, man. So let me, let me tell you this right here, man. What we tell it now is exclusive, right? Because anybody that did that time like we did they're gonna leave that part out they're not gonna tell you that they watched general hospital young and the rest is victor and nikki they ain't gonna tell yeah, you that yeah, yeah come on man i used to like oh um, and what is the black dude on young and the restless name he was powerful too he had the son and the daughter and they were all light-skinned and the daughter was beautiful i had the, the entire time i was in the penitentiary I had the world's biggest crush on that daughter, man. She was so beautiful. Like, that's why I wanted to. And then I got into the storyline. You know what I'm saying? You got Victor Newman is just so gangster. It's unbelievable. You got Jack over here doing some crazy stuff at the same time. It's literally some pretty thug shit. General Hospital. Now it's got Sonny, the gangster mafia man running around. So I know I'm y'all know in the comments, I know what I'm talking about. Haven't watched yeah. that shit in years, Hollywood, since I got to the free world. I didn't have time for it. I can still remember more episodes of, of them shows than I can days in prison, probably. You see, you see the comments blowing up. Uh uh, uh what they say, uh Look, Neil, Hospital, that's right, Neil. General Neil Hospital, Hospital, you know what I'm saying? Say General Hospital ain't no lie. So that shows you that they tuned in to what we talking about, and the only thing different between me and you than anybody else is this the part. That they ain't gonna tell on no prison channel. You right, see what right, I'm saying? Right, right. No, they ain't gonna admit to it. But we men, we ain't got no problem with that. You know what I mean? That's just it's what it is. Real life in there. And and did you ever hear about a unit where they didn't watch General Hospital in this prison system? I doubt it. Let, it. Let, let, let me ask you this though: Are you gonna hear any other prison channel besides the Texas, the Texas prison stories and the Ferguson Chronicle talk about? Men watching General Hospital, Sonny, Nikki, Victor on their channel. And your ass need to be quiet when it's on, too. How about that? Be quiet. Pay oh, you, you better be quiet. Yeah. You better be quiet because they're going to be tuned in. And when he you say so. Slamming dominoes while they watching Young and the Restless, you're going to fight after the show. Ain't no doubt. And guess what's going to happen? So when you slam that domino, you're going to have the whole day room looking back at you. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, when you was over there, was there an old school cat from Galveston that walked on the cane named Mr. Speaker? Was he there? Landy Speaker? He was I old. I can't say right out, man. I'll be lying if I said, yeah. I just didn't know if you remember. Landy Speaker 
was the only person that I ever seen had his own table over there in the day room. Like he had a four seat table that literally only he sat at. And if you wanted to sit at that table, you had to tap him on the show. Mr. Speaker, you mind if I sit with you? You know what I'm saying? And he would always say, it's okay. Sure. But you had to ask him first, man. You know what I'm saying? And he yeah. was, he was old school with bodies under his belt and stuff like that. He had so much respect. He was in a young man's prison where probably any of us could have beat him up at that age. He was just too old at, at that time. He was a bad man in his day, but he was too old at that time. But there was nobody there willing to disrespect him, not even slightly. You understand? And a lot of times when I would get tired of the BS on the benches, I go talk to Mr. Speaker. You know what I'm saying? I was in the county with his son right before I came there. And I don't even think the man ever really got to meet his son. So he would ask me a lot of questions. How's my son? What's he like? You know, and his son was a damn gorilla, man. He wouldn't. I seen his son. Son came up missing in his cell one day. He could have come out screaming, fought like three people, man. He didn't know who took his shit. He wanted to fight anybody that it was even possible. Backdoor yeah. folks and shit. And when I told his daddy that, his dad said, man, it makes me proud. You know what I'm saying? My son is just like me then. And I say, man, and I see why you got your own table then. You know what I mean? He was a bad yeah. dude, man. But uh, in prison, and I ain't going to lie, we don't ever like to toot our own horns or anything like this, but Hollywood... You got to go to his channel to get the sense of what I'm saying, okay? Because as we already said this, damn near every man that OG Percy has talked about, up and respects and everything on his interviews, they're right there in person doing it with Hollywood. And most of them, probably all of them, have never even been on a camera before. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they're they probably uh, shy like everybody else, but they, they respect Hollywood so much. Here they are tapping in, and I, and they say I'm doing it for you, Wood. You know what I'm saying? So, you being a highly respected inmate that you could call shots. I know you're speaking for Dallas and stuff like that at the time. Can you just shout out some guys you seen that was high powered, like some of the most respected men you remember from anywhere? Like shout them out, show them some love, man, because they deserve that. Well, I, it's it, it's one I know, man. That uh. Me and him was real tight out of uh, San Antonio, go by the name of Andre Mathis, man. Uh, real personal friend of mine, man. And uh, it's another one I know, man, that uh, out of Fort Worth, Texas, man, go by the name of Daco, man. Personal friend of mine. Uh, uh, it's so it, it's so many guys in my 25 year tender, man. Uh, it's, it's 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 unbelievable, man. And uh. But it's another guy, man, that goes by the name of Uncle Sam Slaughter, man. 38 years, man. He's home now. Uh, Antonio Jones, personal friend of mine, he's home now. Uh, it's so many guys that I know, man, that that are standing up guys, man, and, and, and know the real meaning of loyalty. Meaning, if you die for me, I die for you. Right. And right. I don't want to, I don't want the people to get that mystery screw that every day was a bad day when I was there because it wasn't. We had to make the best of a bad situation. So we did whatever we could do uh, to get by, man. You know, it wasn't it wasn't what we was about, but we had to go through that experience, man. And I wouldn't trade it in for nothing in the world, man. So if anybody that I didn't shout out to, man, y'all already know who y'all are, man. Thanks. I just wanted that, man, I just wanted to give you a chance to do that, man, because they, they deserve it too. You know what I'm saying? And Probably a lot of people see this, man. Hey, this is this is a uh, y'all. Let us know in the comments if y'all enjoy this, man. Because me and Hollywood plan on doing some more, you know, working together and, and getting a little more comfortable. We've been getting to know each other a little better and everything, and we're having fun, man. Uh, y'all need to go subscribe to his channel, Hollywood. You know what? I was gonna tell you, you're so cold at them thumbnails. I feel like you should start telling people you'll do their thumbnails for money. I'd be charging folks for it. I think they'll pay you. That'd be a good business. You know what? I always wanted with somebody that do it for me for some cash. You ever thought about doing that? Well, like I say, man, you know what, though, man? Uh, you know, I'm generous at doing a lot of things, man. So if a man is really uh, considering uh, wanting the thumbnail, he can always reach me on Facebook, like I said, man, or just leave in the comments. He can even uh, leave it in the comments with you, and you can get in contact with me, man. So I don't have a problem with doing that, man, because uh, my thing is this, Tim, man, that I think that, Every platform on YouTube, whether it's big or whether it's small, 
it should always have room for the next person that's interested in doing anything, man. Because not only people that's been to prison have a story, people in society have a story too, man. And right now, uh, whether we want to admit it or not, man, uh, it's a mental health crisis out here, man. We at war. Yeah, absolutely, man. That's that's what they uh that's what they keep saying. There's two sides to it. Some people want gun control. Some people need mental health, and it's it's mental health is the problem right now. They say literally, probably one in five people out here is damn near insane right now. Need medicine and everything else, and it's just a it's getting to be a, a strange world out here. We're heading into like a depression, a bad economy, and all kind of things. And if uh y'all are young. Or you're coming home or something, I want you to go watch his interview that he did with Blue Hands. Blue Hands, if y'all didn't know, uh, I, I don't like keep talking about him, but Percy talked about Blue Hands. Okay. When you watch that, you will have, you will literally think Blue Hands was this ignorant fool that was just violent, crazy, just doing things, just sounding like he was just off the charts. And he might have been. But when you actually hear the man speak, highly intelligent. You understand? Very intelligent. He asked him, well, you know, what's keeping you straight out here? Blue Hand said the exact same thing that's going on in my life. He's got a kid right now, you know, and that was touching to me, man. And there's been more than one man say that OG Shug said the same thing. Shout out to him. And But what he said, and that's what I want a lot of people to pay attention to, a man that is known statewide, worldwide now for being an OG, for being a gangster, they call him Blue Hands because he's a crib and he fights good. Shit like this, you understand? Literally said at this age in his life, what do he say? How he learned to ignore the bullshit. Yeah. If it ain't about him and his family and in his face, he don't care about it. And that's how you got to be right now. You know what I'm saying? Take care of all y'all out there. If y'all living that gang life right now, I'm going to tell you from somebody that spent 25 years actively gang banging. You know what I'm saying? Inside prisons and outside and all that. There's no future in it. There's no real true loyalty. None of that shit. It's false. You know, when you go down, Bloods and Crips don't even feed you, man. You know what I mean? You can be a Crip starving to death with a Crip eating a big bowl next to you. You ain't got a right to take none of it if he don't want to give you none. You know what I'm saying? It's a different game in there, man. And it's just not what these kids want. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. I want a uh, couple questions, man, before we tap up out of here. Go on, uh, if y'all got any questions for Hollywood. Drop them in the comments, y'all. Real, real talk. I know he'll answer them for you. Somebody wanted to know the time frame where you was at Ferguson. That's what they asked a minute ago. Uh, I was on Ferguson from uh, I think I was over, I was over there for ten years, man. So I think it was ninety to two thousand, one of those times like that, man. Yeah. So he was there basically the entire nineties, and that's before, the time when it was notorious. Before we get out of here, man, and it was also the individual that. OG Percy always talked about and looked up to, and he called him the Beehive. That's right. Born and raised in Houston, Texas, man. Uh, I want to give a shout out to King B. He's a personal friend of mine. Yeah, yeah. I watched that one. I watched that one today. Shout out King B. He's from the Southwest Side, Five Nine Bounty Hunter. And you know, uh, B, man, he did a great interview with you. If you see this, I, I really liked that and enjoyed it because you know what? You asked him about calling shots and everything else. You know what? He reminded me like I was in prison. He say, shit, we spanked that baby and put him to bed. That, yeah. was, his exact, that was his exact thing. Like when it's time for you to get it, you're going to get it. It don't matter yeah. who he was. And he literally said he had to call a shot on one of his own friends that he didn't want to do. But see, you got to realize one thing though, man, that uh, King B came up under the old school, man. You know, which was me. I met King B when he was 19. And he came from the streets as a certified, you know, as a certified gang member. Uh -huh. But what he didn't know was the politics of prison. And those two things run on different lanes. It's like I explained to you last time, just because you're respected in the street don't mean you're going to come down there and get the same respect. In other words, you leaving your house and you coming to my house. Right. My house, my house, my rules. So you either apply by these rules or you'll get a quick F5. And what I mean by F5, that was a life flight off the unit. Yeah. So that's how that's how I was played. Shout out King B. Shout out King B, man. That was a good one, man. Listen to what he's telling y'all. You violate on a serious prison, 
you're getting life flighted over there, man. They're going to take it to you. And you even asked them, uh, how you coming? He said, I'm sending them hard heads at them. You know what I mean? And that's just normal. He wasn't he wasn't BSing or any different than anybody else. You know what I'm saying? That's If you did something stupid, Hollywood going to send them hard heads at you. You know what I mean? Anybody going to do it. So there's a level of self self uh discipline that needs to be going on respect everything you know i've never seen as much respect for another man uh look at that here's one answer this i've never seen enough that much respect for other men you will never bump into a man without saying excuse me i never did and nobody ever bumped into me without saying excuse me you know what i'm saying you might say please and thank you boys got manners inside of prison basically oh, well, you're, you're a killer and you got manners and i and you know what there's a couple more things i want to think answer that question is there any one thing that you miss about on the inside the only thing i miss about in prison man is uh now that i'm in society man and, and the respect factor for the people that walk the streets in society is is is, is so small that they don't they, they can never imagine the level of respect you will give a man in prison. I say that to say this, man, that in today's society, the only thing a man has identified is the tangible things that he has. And the number one thing, and we all know it's true, the only respect the man get in society is the respect of the weapon that he carries the size of a stick is the old saying yes you know saying? yeah and in right. prison you have no stick all you have is you and your balls yeah facts man you know every time that i ever got out i always thought to myself this free world is a disrespectful sorry ass place and it's not it's not like see you asked that question why we were talking about the respect level and yes you will fight somebody might purposely disrespect you you know what i'm saying but if, if you receive some disrespect in prison nine times out of ten it's a test they're doing that on purpose man they're yeah. not just blatantly a disrespectful person walking around he won't live long like that you know what i mean he's gonna catch that life flight so you know in a penitentiary setting if a man come up disrespect you it's just it's action or you gotta go your people on life fight you out you know what i'm saying and then it goes for anything and let me tell you something that i was gonna tell you a story i never tell i tell one too real quick uh on beto man i ain't gonna say nobody's name all right there was a hispanic dude these were neutrons cats here no gang nothing they were fishing down a hundred dollar bill to another cell down there trying to give it to them we was on lockdown they was fishing a hundred down to them trying to get it from three row to one row a blood cat boomeranged it in and pulled it in his cell in two row and took it and it threw the line back out everybody knew who took that hundred dollar bill i'm talking about everybody on the entire wing knew that that blood took it when the neutron mexicans when it all popped they're begging for their money man shoot shoot the line who took the money what the hell and at the end of the thing they're getting mad well whoever took it it's on when the doors roll we got to do you know who but then here's the play they pulled they kept acting like we don't know who took it who took our money they didn't want to kill nothing they didn't yeah. want to go to war with nobody they were like do y'all know who took our money and of course nobody's gonna say nothing but everybody knows who took it including them that was a thing that was crazy and these were hispanic men and a black man took their thing no tongo bled nobody stood up for these neutron mexicans because they wouldn't stand up for themselves they literally just lost that hundred dollar bill that was the coldest jack move i ever seen in my life you know what i mean when people from both sides seen him fishing it they know it came straight down who had yeah. to take the damn thing and shit, he said Fuck, i don't got your hundred dollar bill it wasn't me and the blood stood up and said if you didn't see him take it if he didn't see him take it he didn't take it you better drop that issue and they literally just bought some smoke with his shit. you know what i mean it, stuff like that would happen all the time on beto let you not let you not have your respect as soon as you step into the day room and your cell is at work or something, they robbing your cell. I mean, you getting wiped out. How many, like literally, they popped them doors, 
and they're going with their bags into your cell and taking everything and they walk right back to their cell and everybody that's on the run knows who just did it nobody gonna say nothing you you ain't no ain't that business so it's literally about the respect factor you know what i mean and for the men that don't have it it's hard in there you can't keep a damn soup in your locker for the men that have it they can leave 10 meat packs sitting at the end of their bed where nobody will touch them walking by in and out. So that's just how the game goes. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So that was crazy. Last thing I'm going to ask you before we get up out of here is, did you ever, ever see anybody? Oh, I never seen this, but I heard about a few people, people throwing shit in on them and catching them on fire and shit like that as they walk by. You ever seen anybody do anything like that? No. To be honest with you, I ain't never seen that. That was for my time, man. <laughs> yeah, man I, I mean, I heard about it, and but that's what I used to stay not liking. Man, when I'm talking about when in and out come, I didn't even like my feet by them bars, if you want to know the truth. You know what I'm saying? It was just like a, something I ain't like, man, because I'm like, damn, man, I don't want to be asleep with my feet by the bars. Somebody sliced me. It's crazy shit. I, yeah. I probably was just paranoid, but I just never knew. You know what I mean? So I didn't like it, man, for real. So uh, let me ahead. ask you this. Or let me let me ask anybody let me ask anybody in this chat this right because you know I tried to figure this out for 25 years when I was locked up man and now that I'm free sometimes I still try to figure it out especially what's going on today right you can kill a man in society with a handgun right but when you come to prison and I hand you a knife, you won't kill him. Why you think that is? Because it's up close and personal. Or they scared they're going to... Why, why you think that is? Why? I don't know. Because in prison, you can't run off. You got to face the consequences no matter what, right? Yeah. See, if you kill a man out here, you can leave. But in there, you can't run off. Yeah. You're going to have to look at his friends tomorrow and everything else. Yeah, that's yeah. true, man. I think we're going to leave it right there, y'all. Uh, shout out to Pisa16 in the comments. That's my partner in Mexico, man. Um, Tongo Mejiclage right there. I see him in the comments. Hollywood, I appreciate you stopping by again, man. Uh, we're going to do some more, y'all. You know what I mean? We're going we're gonna to do it as time time allows and progress. Y'all see, I got my daughter. She interrupts all the things. She finally fell asleep, but literally uh we've been enjoying this man and there was a lot of support from text print stores going to his channel and subscribing everything i want y'all to make sure y'all do it i'm gonna put it on the banner right here we're gonna put his uh hold on we're gonna put his channel in the description again i think it's already there y'all make sure y'all tap in ferguson chronicles with uh og hollywood hollywood what's your what's your if you got one interview from your channel that you would recommend them to go see in one video, what would it be? Number one, best one, you favorite one. You got one? Oh man, it's so many, it's so many over there, man. That uh and and, and I don't want to be biased towards those that have interviewed on my channel, man. So I look at it like this, man. If you've ever did time in any state, whether it's out of state, in state, your story. Is no bigger than the next man's story. That's, that's my that's my respect for those that have interviewed on the channel, man. That's right. I got you. And then, yeah, I hear that. Okay, well, let me tell you something. Hollywood is the only person on YouTube, Tim don't got this, that all those building tenders and turnkeys and everything that Mr. Larry always talked about, Hollywood got an interview with a head turnkey on there that we explain to you how he handled inmates and how he carried around the, the, the weapon. You got it. I ain't going to give it up. You got to go to his channel and watch that. That's amazing. Hollywood got a warden on his channel. He's got an ex warden on his channel. Nobody else has that. You understand? So there's a lot of things that you're going to see on the Ferguson Chronicles that I won't be able to give to you that nobody else will probably be able to give to you. You know what I mean? So, Make sure y'all go show some love and support. Subscribe to the channel. Y'all hit the thumbs up for this one on Texas Prison Stories. Sorry for my daughter interrupting a couple times. Hollywood, I, I'm sorry about that, but you know how it goes, man. It's kind of yeah, rough yeah, right yeah. now. But uh, I just want to say salute to everybody in the chat, man. Thank you to the moderators that was handling the business, KK, Sarah, 
Oh, uh, y'all be cool, man. Show this man some love, and we'll be back with another one pretty soon, y'all. Texas Prison Story family and uh, Ferguson Chronicles. We'll catch y'all later, man. Salute.